against God himself. Now, for you to reap the benefit of God being your defense, of God being your help, of God being your refuge, you have to learn to forgive those people. If they even show a little remorse, accept it immediately and bless them. If you have something to give, you can. Take and give them. If they are sincere, the Lord will forgive them and help them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If they are not sincere, they are only heaping hot coals of fire against their own very head. That's why when many Christians ask me to pray against their enemy, I want to know in what form we are praying against this enemy. Is it for the Lord to, to bring them back, which is what always the purpose of God, is that the sinner might repent and come back to God. Now, in there are churches I know, if you go there, they will pray for hours nonstop. But every prayer is about how God is going to destroy, throw fire, pull down, pull, I mean, annihilate all their enemies. My God. If God start killing all our enemies, we are going to be alone in this world. Because even some of your own family member might be among your enemies. Yeah. Your mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, husband, wife. <laughs> all of them will be dead. <laughs> May God have mercy on us. So, you learn to forgive. You learn to pray for them. There was one of them who sent me many years ago, sent call, it was a test. He said, this has not been going well with me. I've never heard from him for since those days, things happened. I grabbed it with two hands and I said, what is going on? Not because I want to poke nose. I want to be able to guide them out of that Whatever God is doing, call it punishment, call it, you know, or give it different names. My whole objective is how can they come out and turn to the Lord? That will be my joy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At this sinner, like me, I was, at this person has turned to the Lord and become a blessing to the glory of God. So let us not rejoice in uh, the fall of our enemy. Even you, when people are rejoicing that you are falling, the Lord will pull you up. That is the promise of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the second thing I always learn in that dream. Amen? 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 That they shall surely gather, but not by me, says the Lord. That any that gather against you shall fall for your own very sake. Amen? But don't go start giving testimony about the fall of your enemy. Let your compassion show. Let the nature of Christ show in you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who even at the point of being killed, what was his request? Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of these people are people that, you know, as we were hearing last week from, <clears throat> from pastor. Some of them are actually people that are helping destiny. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If those people have not done what they did, I wouldn't have amounted to anything. I wouldn't be even be here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It got so bad at a point that instead of killing myself, I decided to fast. And I was waiting on God for about 10 days straight fasting. And that's when I always give you guys a dream and God say, I'm going to take you to a certain country. I don't even know where I'm at. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For God brought it to pass to his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. The third thing I see in that dream that God does fight our battles. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 4. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. It, um, sorry, Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Exodus 
24. Let's say be the name of the Lord. I think I got it wrong here. Uh, it says, it is God that fights our battles. Amen? Now, <clears throat> God fights our battle, but we must be sure to allow God to fight it his own way. Many of us want God to fight our battle our own way. Verse 4 says, For the Lord your God is he that great with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, these enemies can be spiritual or physical one. But it is God that goes with you to fight for you. But we have to leave God to fight it his own way. Now, in that dream at that time, with the level of knowledge I have there, I was actually doing some pastoral job. Oh my God. Those days, if I remember it, my body, will, I would be having, I would be shivering. Because even when I was in pulpit preaching in those days, I've seen people cursing me from the window. I'm preaching. They would be calling me, they'd be doing, every, I mean, every day was like a nightmare. And in then in the night, I'm being attacked spiritually. And in the day, it is one kind of abuse, physical one, beating and stuff. My hands, my eyes is swollen. So what are you doing there? It's a long story. We can't go there. Talk of life being miserable. And you cannot do anything about it. And then I was looking for God to fight the battle my own way. So when God says he's going to fight your battle, leave him to fight that battle his own way at his own time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If God has answered any of my prayer against those people, this person that texted me three or four hours wouldn't be alive to test me. The one that I've turned and given them life to God wouldn't do that. What is more important? That they be dead and buried or that they live and give God glory and their life turn to God. For me, I would take the letter for any suffering in the whole world. That they will come to the knowledge of Christ. That they will have eternal life. That God will rejoice in their salvation. And that they be sons and daughters of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let us learn to leave God to fight the battle at his own. This is the things I garnished from those, that dream. The same dream occurred several times in my life over and I just had one early this year. The last one I will bring about is from 2 Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 3 verse 16. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16. Amen? Amen. That God has a purpose that in all situations that you shall have peace. I'm always dismayed in this dream. I'm always frightened. There was no peace. There is this, 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 this thing that is so agonizing that when I wake up at times, I'm soaked with weight. It's like a trauma. And each time I go back to the same situation. But then I wake up, it is not what it is because God has pulled me out of the miry grave. And not only did he do that, he stood me upon the rock, blessed be the name of the Lord. And he didn't stop at that. He put a new song in my mouth, even a song of praise to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. But in that dream, I don't have peace. That is my understanding, and I'm wanting you to know today that no matter what you are going through, Remember that all oh God is our help in ages past. And the same God will be your hope in years to come. Now, and what does he say here? Let's read together. Now, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. He says here that the Lord of peace, Jesus Christ, the world is seeking peace without the Prince of Peace. It's never going to happen. 
How can you get something that is not there? The Prince of Peace has to be there for you to have peace. And Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Now he said, the Lord of Peace himself, himself give you peace always. By what? All means. Hallelujah. What does he mean by all means? If he has to subdue them to give you that peace, he will. If he has to, whatever that is necessary. And I always think, and I believe, after I look at it, I say, my God, I didn't know what force is behind me in those days. I didn't know what power that is holding me up. He said that everlasting God is what you are refuge and underneath you always is everlasting and the internal God is your refuge and underneath you is everlasting. That what was behind me was so powerful that if I have known I wouldn't be this fearful. I wouldn't be this so concerned. I will be relaxed. I will be thanking God every day because there is a purpose to what God is doing. And that purpose is to achieve his objective. And I didn't know it in my level of understanding. Even today, I still make mistakes in that area. But now I come to understand that God has a pattern of doing things that you, me, in our level, in our say, model, as a human being, cannot, cannot understand what God is driving on. Let God give you a revelation. I assure you. So this is the peace, this is the plan of God that he will always give you peace. And that is always. And that is by all means. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now I want to tell you that your testimony is powerful. What is testimony? We are talking of things in the past. Amen. What God has done. And many of us don't take this testimony serious even because when things happen at another time, maybe in a different way, maybe it is different, we, we, we don't remember those testimonies. If you're going to get anything out of the message this morning, get this, that your testimony is powerful. Because if God has healed you of headache yesterday, he's able to do even greater Tomorrow, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you have looked for that job at a point you cannot feed yourself even one square meal and now you are doing it, then God is able to make you to even get three square meal in the next, in the future. Our testimony is to talk of what has happened. And that's what God is showing me. It's your testimony. This dream is your testimony. This is your past. So, if you wake up and look and it's no more there, now lying in a nice comfortable bed those days it was in a mat that I was sleeping on that God has advanced God has prospered, God has done it this was the past, it's now a testimony so that tomorrow if life challenges come if situation doesn't line up the way I want it, if there's going to be a turmoil as it is in this hymn he said, within the shadow of thy throne still may we dwell secure, sufficient in thy arms alone he said our defense is sure. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That I may know that my defense is sure. One young man in the Bible, David was his name, came to the camp of Israel. And in this camp, there was running around, there was fear, there was turmoil. Israel did not remember their testimony of the, of the old. They didn't remember the God that put them through Egypt, through the land of uh, pestilence and, and, and suffering and whatever they went through and brought them to promised land and subdued their enemies. Now there is this man called Goliath in this world. Every day for 40 whole days, he came to persecute and insult the people of God and put them in fear. The Bible said that when he comes, all the men of war, they ran away. They went to hide. Even the king himself was shaking like a baby. Then this young man, David, came and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistines that is here to defy the armies of the living God himself? And 
and they don't, don't even go there. This man is a, this, this, this thing you are seeing is a man eater. It's a war machine. It's a killing machine. That's why all of us, nobody can challenge him. He's nine foot nine inches. I calculated it. Six cubit and a span is nine foot nine inches. That's about the tall of that, uh, maybe that, uh, that light there. My God. If you are looking at him, you have to bend down like this to see his face. His war weapon is like a, 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 a beaver, so, something they used to weave in those days. That's how tall it is. His sword is such that you, you may not be able to lift it if you are not walking out like me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But this young man look and say, who is he? And well, nobody, everybody has been running away. Nobody want to challenge him. So they say, well, in a land where everybody is blind, one eye man is a king. So they took the small boy right to the king and said, king, there's somebody who is willing to challenge uh, uh, this Goya. And king looks, that's a small boy. What can you do, boy? <clears throat> do you know what you are walking into? It's going to kill you. Say, no. He went back to what? His testimony. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He went back to what? What was his testimony? He said, I was in the wilderness as a shepherd, watching my father's sheep, and a lion and a bear came to take the flocks. I rose up in the name of the Lord and do what? Slaughtered them. Don't say concise Philistine is going to be like one of those animals. Blessed be the name of the Lord. King said, well, nobody is willing. To, Forty days has been coming and going. None of us can challenge him. And somebody say he has done something, even though he's a small kid of maybe 16 or 18 years old. I don't know. Okay, let me dress you up. They put on the armor. They put on the sword. They put on the sheaves, the helmet, the shoe for war. And he couldn't even lift his leg because he's not used to say, take off this thing. I don't know how to use them. He went back to what he knew. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do not ever forget the five stones that the Lord has given you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I had the name of my business in those days. I call it business. I'm not sure it's called business. But my five stones associates. There is five stones that God has given each and every one of us Christians. And David only have to use one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Because he trusted in the Lord God. To fight his battles. When that man, as we are about to round up, was coming to eat him alive. I say, am I a dog that you are coming to me to kill me with a sling, with a catapult? I will take you and kill you and do this. Say, no. He gave him his testimony again and said, but I will destroy you in the name of the Most High God. Who is the captain of the armies of Israel. Do that string and roll it and roll it and flew it. That angel directed it right at the middle point of his head. And boom. Tall as he is, he become flat. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the Lord is he that fights your battle. Now, in closing, in last place we are going to read is Psalm 46. The book of Psalm 46. Verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is what our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Remember that, brethren, there's going to be trials of life. There's going to be storms from time to time. There's going to be a life of Almost at times a nightmare line that I experienced. But God gave me these four 
order of things, and number one of which is that he will never leave you, neither will he forsake you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen? Do not rely on your own strength like I did and went through that pain. Do not trust your own power like I did and it didn't work out anything for me. And do not hate people who are obstacles on your way because they may be just destiny helpers like we had last Sunday. People are helping to bring your destiny to be. Joseph wouldn't have known it, but each one of them, his brothers, Potiphar's wife, the people he made the interpretation of dream to, all of them are helping him towards that goal to bring forth what God has promised in his life. And you that is sitting here or watching us tonight, uh, this, this, this day, I want you to, if God has ever done anything for you, whether it is small or big, it's a testimony. When you are facing the next glory out in your life, when you are facing that situation that looks overwhelming, go back to what the Lord has done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let it give you strength and understanding that the same God who was with you when you were in the valley, the same God will be with you even in this mountain. And the same God who has held you through it all, he does not change. He's not a man. The stone of Israel is not a man, the Bible says. And I see like the son of man. There's no variableness, no changes within him. If he says it, he's able to do it. And his promise is here. I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is our refuge. The praise team, you can come up. And a very present help. Even in the time of trouble. We are living in a time of trouble. Just when we think that one COVID is going, Another one will come with a different head and tail. They call it variants. Because when we think that this, whatever it is, is going, another one will come. And people are despairing. People are losing hope. Brethren, let us not lose hope. Let us count our blessings and name them one by one. Let us remember the testimony that the Lord has performed for us. And let us hold it for the future challenges that will come. Remembering always, O oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are watching us this morning and you haven't given your life to Christ. Please consider doing it. You cannot during these promises if you do not take up the salvation of God. But if you are saved, then these promises are yours. Receive it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Shall we be on our feet as we are offering the Lord? We give glory to the Lord, He reigns. We give glory to the Lord, He reigns. He reigns, He reigns, He reigns. We give glory to the Lord, He reigns. We give glory to the Lord, He reigns.
Hallelujah. Before we pray, please uh, allow me. Uh, let me call my son, David Oba. Are you here? Today happens to be his birthday. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are giving a gift of money to him, I'm the one collecting. I'm helping to hold it for him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I think, is that today that is Brock Colabo's birthday too? Was it today? Or was it yesterday? God bless him too. I want us to pray for David. And I really want to thank God for his life. We couldn't ask for a better son in every aspect. I'm not just saying this, it's true. Amen. Very obedient and God fearing. Hallelujah. God, he took after me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, you, you guys know me before. I can go. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God has been kind to us, each and every one of us. God is good to us. Amen. I just wonder, Pastor Peter, please, can you just come and pray for him? If he takes his bed. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your son. I will thank you, Lord, for his uprising, for his down seat. I want to thank you for the challenging times. I want to thank you for how far you have lived. When the enemy thought <laughs> he could snuff out his life, you said, No. Our Father, I remember it all. I thank you in the name of Jesus. That is a son of joy. That be gladness. Not just to his family, but the house of faith. Father, Lord, as his name is, so Lord, so shall he be in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, he's going out and he's coming in. His academics at school. Father, you will cause him to rejoice. You cause us to rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant him, grant his parents their heart's desire concerning David in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you for being with him this far, Lord. And you are able and more than able for him to fulfill the books that was written concerning him. In the name of Jesus. Every trap that the enemy will keep for you. In the name of Jesus. You are clean as kept according to my word. In the name of Jesus. The sun will not smite you by day. Neither will darkness overrun your life. In the name of Jesus. When the excellent are numbered. Ah, David will be the number. In the name of Jesus, we rejoice at the sound. The, 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 the trees of the wilderness will resound. We rejoice at the sound of your name. In the name of Jesus, how they will clap for you. Say, Here comes a son that will bring joy to his generation. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, Lord. Be wherewithal, O Lord, from on high, grant it to him. I pray in the name of Jesus. To be a stalwart in the palace of the king in the name of Jesus. God bless him, oh Lord. Oh, bless him, bless his parents in more ways than they can even comprehend. That they look back and they say, Ah, now we be this concerning the son in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. One day he was lying down like dead. The doctors are radically giving up. People were crying and saying, hopeless almost. The same Jesus. Amen. The same Jesus. He did it for me before. He will do it again. Came to me in a dream and said, do not cry, do not worry. He will shave his head again. I jump up from where I'm sleeping and say, he will not die, but he will live. And he still alive today to the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's my shield and my hiding place. My refuge. My waymaker. He has never failed. And he will not fail. He will do it again. To his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Surely, goodness, mercy, all the days, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God go with you, peace to all.